Yo, yo, guys, welcome back again today. And today we're going to be talking about Cathay Williams. Cathay Williams was born a slave in 1844 and was the first African-American woman who served as a soldier in the U.S. Army. Williams was also the only documented Afro-American woman in the 1800s in the U.S. Army. Born in Independence, Missouri, Williams was born to a mother that was enslaved and a free man, which was her father. Williams would work as a house slave on the Johnson Plantation. In 1861, the Union would occupy occupy the area and Williams had limited freedom. Slaves would be forced to work for the Union Army and were property due to war. She would go on to work as a washer and cook for the Union Army in 1861. Remaining as a civilian servant throughout the Civil War, she would serve in many different states while her life was constantly on the line. Some states she would serve in were Louisiana, Georgia, and Arkansas. She would even serve for General Phil Sheridan in 1864. In 1866 on November 15th, Williams would disguise her gender as a man to enlist and join in Company A of the 38th Infantry. This disguise was very necessary because the prohibition at the time banned women from service in the army. She would change her name to William Cathay and try to join the newly formed all black US Army Regiment. She wanted to join to make her own living and not be dependent on her friends or relations. Standing at 5'9", her height would make it easier to get into the regiment. Williams would go on to fool the army and would enlist in three years engagement. The only people in the newly formed all black regiment that knew her gender were her cousin and friend who both enlisted in the new regiment as well. During William's army career, she would march with the 38th Infantry 500 miles to Fort Harker, Kansas, and then to Fort Union in the New Mexico Territory. Months after the journey, she would march on foot 400 more miles to Fort Cumming and to Fort Bayard in the New Mexico Territory. The infantry would arrive and protect immigrants and miners from Apache Indian attacks. The army was not an easy road, especially for African Americans. The 38th Infantry usually received lower quality weapons, less resources, and overall bad treatment in the army. Nevertheless, the army was an attractive organization for freed slaves who employment opportunities post-war were very, very limited. In the army, they would receive regular meals, beds, medical care, and paychecks. Marching was everyday life for a soldier, and the 38th Infantry would march from central Kansas across the rivers, plains, deserts, mountains, and hostile Indian territory in Oklahoma. These campaigns would put extreme toll on the body, and Williams hid her gender as well all the time. Williams would eat with men, sleep beside them, and joke with them. Williams was also the first and only woman buffalo soldier. She continuously faced the fear of being discovered as well as rampant disease that claimed the lives of others in her regiment. Concealing her body shape was easier due to the army uniforms, but no one knows how she dealt with using the bathroom by herself or other womanly things. Williams' career would be cut short due to smallpox, marching, and heat sicknesses. Four occasions of being hospitalized would be the cause. The last hospital visit would be the undoing of her army career. In 1868, a post-surgeon at Fort Bayer found out that Williams was a woman during her hospitalization. The post surgeon would inform the post commander and Williams would be discharged from the army. Many men in her regiment were also mad at her for lying and some even acted bad towards her. Her days of being part of the 38th Infantry and the infantry becoming part of the legendary Buffalo Soldiers were all over. Escorting vulnerable wagon trains, mapping territory, protecting settlers, fighting, and protecting forts would all be a thing of the past. Williams would drift from place to place for a while before she moved to Fort Union in New Mexico Territory to work as a cook. She would soon get married but turned in her husband after he stole horses and money from her. She would then move to Pablo, Colorado where she worked as a seamstress and then moved to Trinidad, Colorado. William's story would soon travel to a St. Louis reporter whose excitement for the first African American woman to serve in the army was through the roof. The reporter would travel to Colorado to interview Williams. On January 2nd, 1876, the St. Louis Daily Times published a story about Williams. Soon after her health would turn for the worse and her toes on one foot had to be amputated due to diabetes. 
Deafness, diabetes, and other illnesses forced her to apply for military disability pension in 1891. A doctor who worked for the pension bureau would conclude that she did not qualify and rejected her request. The US Army would go on to tell her that since she was a woman and what she did was illegal, these pensions were denied. The US Army also stated that no such pension existed. Williams would die around 1893, but her exact death date is unknown. She is honored at the Richard Allen Cultural Center. So yo guys, today we learned about another black woman, a very strong black woman that was part of the army in the United States. Please like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification right next to the subscription button so you will always get all my videos and like me on all my social medias which are Afric Network, which is Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, and Facebook. Guys, each one teach one, always love each other, always trying to learn from each other. And until next time, peace, one love.